Hello, welcome to Maues in the Amazon, Brazil. Um, we're in my bedroom at the moment where I'm staying, at Marty Davidson's house. I'm going to ask him a few questions. Um, first of all, how did you arrive here in Maues? Maues, you get to Maues via boat, as you know. Uh, you fly into Manaus and then you get a boat, a 20 hour journey, 18 hour journey uh, via boat, and then the next day you arrive into Maues. Uh, how I arrived personally here is going back 13 years and I was invited out to Brazil and I uh, came out to Brazil and uh, God really impacted my life and I wanted to come back and, and do something for Brazil or you know that sort of uh, uh, the missionary, tick the missionary box, you know do something once, once a year and uh, God said no. I don't want you taking a box, I want your life. And God gave me a real choice, uh, come to Brazil and, and serve him here, here in Brazil, or stay in Ireland and be blessed. But uh, his choice for me was Brazil. And so I've been here for, for the last 12 years or so. What about the language? Could you speak any Portuguese when you first came here? Or? No, no, not at all. Um, it was, it, what people call immersion learning. I came, no one spoke English to me. Uh, there was nobody speaking English to me, it was all Portuguese. Um, I describe it like uh, sticking your head in a washing machine and hitting the spin button. <laughs> and, uh, but after seven months, I could, I, I could communicate and I was fairly fluent. That's good. Who, who um, are the family then? Who are the family? The family is me, Martin, uh, from Northern Ireland. Uh, and then Rebecca, my wife, is from Sao Paulo, or Greater Sao Paulo, not the city, but the state of Sao Paulo, and then we have two children who have been born in the Amazon, the state of uh, the Amazon state of Brazil, and uh, Daniel, who's coming nine, and Elizabeth, aka Betty, who's seven. So that's the family. Any animals to to add to that collection? <laughs> uh, as part of the family, mm. uh, I suppose um, part of the family you'd have to say Scott, our dog. Uh, um, is a great dog and a uh, guard dog, or if you ask Daniel, he's our police dog, and uh, he's part of the family. And then we have three tortoises. One was given as a present, two were bought to be eaten, and uh, we never, they got given names and so we couldn't eat them. And uh, then we have a cat, and um, we're still sort of, yeah, we're still adapting <laughs> to the cat. Be uh, the, the cat's betchies, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody else is just regretting the decision for daddy to <laughs> get the cat. There you go. What about um, back home? Do you miss anything back home, you know, back from Ireland? Is there anything you miss in particular? Um, you, miss, you miss friends and family. You know, there, there's days when you're missing, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's lovely if my brother will ring me up or my dad will ring me up and it's great to talk to people back home. Uh, apart from that, um, I miss walking on the beach, you know, and a bit of the flavour of the you know the, the the salt air in your mouth or mm -hmm. walking up the moor and mountains yeah. you know up to getting out getting away getting a wee white golf ball which I haven't done in years. You know. Most people um, watching will be thinking, you know, you're in Brazil, it's a real hot country, and you're saying you're missing the beach. Yeah. Um, why? Um, right, we're in the middle of the Amazon in a place called Mar West. You can Google it. It's um, what a four-hour flight. To the to the coast to the sea to the beach. Yeah. Um, in the, the dry season, there is a bit of a beach, but it's a river. It's not, it's not you know, it's not salty water. It's not a beach. You know, it's it's sand. There you go. <laughs> it's sand. What would you say are the best and worst things about Maui? Uh, best things, uh, probably the best things are are, are the worst things. You know. Mal West, there's there's no middle ground. There's it really is a um, you know you're either a hundred percent for God or you're going backwards. Yeah. You know there's a, a, you've been here what a week or so. Mm -hmm. You know there's a there's a there's a sort of a battle in the spiritual. There's a battle in the natural. You're you you know you're fighting the heat, the humidity, and um, if you're not if you don't stay sharp and work at staying sharp uh, in your relationship with God and um, it's going to show very quickly. Yeah. So in, in that sense, that's good. In the other sense, it's like being a, a soldier on the front line, and a soldier can't live on the front line. Yeah. He can he can go to the front line, and afterwards he needs a, he needs to come away, uh, uh, be recycled, better rest. 
and and that would be one of the difficulties of, of my west for me to take the family to Manaus, which is the closest city, is 10 hours away by boat and bus, or 20 hours away by boat, and to spend a week there, you're talking a thousand pounds. So in my west, there's no cinema, there's no McDonald's, there's no public swimming pool, there's no, you know, so it has that disadvantage. But then also, you know, I'm going to buy my fresh bread at the bakery in the morning, you know, hop on the bike, driving along, I'm driving along the river, beautiful skies and yeah. going, God, thank you. Definitely. You know, you're not stuck in traffic jams. So, um, that, the fact that it's isolated has its good points and its bad points. And the fact that it's a place which has had very little evangelism, there's a very little um, Christian foundation, uh, is a good thing because there's an opportunity and a bad thing because of, of the negative drawbacks of that. So, with you being here in Malwares, obviously you had a previous life of in Northern Ireland and Ireland. Um, uh -huh. What was your profession and um, expand a little bit on that? Uh, I was, I am, a, a dentist by trade. Uh, I graduated in 1998, mm -hmm. that's a long time ago for you, but it was yesterday <laughs> for me, uh, in dentistry at Queen's University. And uh, I went on and, and worked as a general dental practitioner in Ballymena in Northern Ireland. And I also worked um, as a clinical supervisor for the School of Dentistry uh, in the Royal Victoria Hospital, basically keeping an eye on eye on undergraduate students. So uh, I still have all my paperwork in order. Uh, sometimes I do a bit of dentistry here. We have a dental surgery. This year we've done very little but uh, my dental degree hasn't been revalidated. So I work together with a dentist from Brazil and it depends just how busy we are and what we, you know, we like to treat the kids at the school, but sometimes it doesn't always work mm. out. Great. Yeah. Since being here, obviously, yeah. um, God's done so many different things through the church and through your lives and your family's lives. Um, one in particular that I found um, amazing since being here is the school. Yeah. Um, could you again expand a little bit on the school and how that started? Um, I mean, I would say the school's a, a God-given strategy hmm. to reach the community of my West. Yeah. And I think in conversation with you, you know, I've talked about there's a perceived need and then there's a need. And each community needs Jesus. But we found that if you reach uh, the people through their perceived need, um, that could be hampers, you know, food hampers, that could be um, building a football pitch for, you know, in a rough area. And, and in my West, the need was, or the perceived need was, there were four, five, and six-year-olds needed to learn to read and write. The, the federal government wasn't doing it. The borough council wasn't doing it. And so we came in and we did it. Uh, with the objective of, right, we've got a hundred children every year, that's a hundred homes we can go into, we've got the legal right of going knocking on their door, coming through their door, praying for them, sharing the word of God, and, and basically using the school as a vehicle to evangelise and show the love of God to the community. So that's what we've been doing. So, in, in saying that, what would you say is, is the mission here? What, what is the mission in general? The mission, the mission is to win souls, full stop. We're here in everything we do, I would say we, we've worked in with small groups and we work, work with uh, food hampers, different projects. The two main things in the church are cell groups and then the school and then we've got the rescue project which is um, basically a, a mission into a really poor area in my west. But the objective is to reach people with the love of God, to build friendships, build relationships, uh, and, and introduce them to Jesus, and, and then to, to train them up in that way. Well, here in Malwares, obviously, you're quite um, restricted, you're quite isolated. Um, obviously, getting things must be a lot more difficult. So, mm -hmm. what would you say is the, the principal needs here? Um, the, the main need here, I would say, is prayer. You know, last night I was lying in bed just thanking God for just the protection over my life, yeah. over my family's life, and uh, you're only as good as your prayer coffin. And so, so we can always do with more prayer, full stop. Always, always more prayer. 
The next thing would be money. You know, we would we would always say money isn't a problem, but definitely is a solution. <laughs> yeah. you know, so the, the 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 school's going really well. Uh, it's we've been running the school for ten years. It's a well-oiled machine in that in that sense. We're seeing lots of fruit, um, and we have the finance. Praise God for the school to keep on going. The rescue project is a new project in, into into one of the worst areas in my west. We don't have supporters, we don't have churches backing us. We really have um, taken a step of faith, believing that as we build it, and when it's ready, God will bring in the support. So that would be something we really need support for that. And then, just as everything has grown so much, we, we need people to help. You know, we need probably another two couples who are willing to commit however long to come out here and serve and if that means you have to learn the language here and go through the pain barrier of that um, you know I, you know I'd probably be the worst ambassador I always say to people no you know unless you know for certain don't come unless you've got a very clear word from God and it's confirmed please don't come because you know if you're here and it's not the will of God you can have it's like that, that warning on the packet of uh, cigarettes, is it? You know, smoking seriously damages your health. Well, being out of the will of God and coming to my West seriously damages yeah, yeah. your health. That makes sense. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much for answering the questions. My pleasure. The mosquitoes are coming in in my yeah. room and it's getting very hot, so we'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much.